In this video, I'm going to talk about spiral curves. But we're going to start with just a simple curve. So in a simple curve, we have a point of curvature and a point of tangency. And essentially what we're doing is connecting those two tangents, the back tangent and the forward tangent, with a, an arc of a circle. So we go from a tangent, which has an infinite radius, to a curve, which has a fixed radius. And so theoretically, there's a disruption in equilibrium at that point where you leave the tangent and enter the curve, which is the PC, and also with the PT. Now, in reality, a driver is going to not drive that very constant path of a perfectly straight line on a tangent to a fixed radius on the curve. They're going to introduce some transition as well. And so that's generally the idea behind adding a spiraled transition to a curve so that you, again, connect the tangent and the circular curve with some smoother transition between those rate values. So overlaying a spiral curve onto a simple curve, we'll see we actually kind of slide that radius in towards the center of the circle because we need the extra room for the spiral transition. So this is what you'll see in upcoming images is this kind of overlay of a simple curve and a spiral curve so that we can see the relationship uh, between those two and the comparison between those two values. So I'm going to remove the simple curve at this point and let's just talk just about the spiral curve points. So what we'll do with the spiral curve is you'll leave the tangent at the point called TS. That's the tangent to spiral point. And so at this point now we're almost a spiral transition. So it's a constantly changing radius. It's an element that constantly changes radius. So starting at the, at the point you leave the tangent, that spiral has an infinite radius, and it transitions to the, fixed the same radius as your fixed simple curve. That occurs at the SC point, the spiral to curve. So we leave the spiral at the SC point and begin the circular curve, the simple arc. We'll continue that simple arc until we reach the CS point. That's the curve to spiral point. That's where we end the curve and start the transition to the spiral. That spiral then transitions back to the tangent at the ST point, the spiral to tangent point. Within the overall deflection angle, the intersecting angle is still equal to the deflection angle. So we now have three components of this. We have the component that's bounded by the simple curve, which is delta sub C. And then we have portions that are dedicated to each spiral theta sub s. And typically with a symmetric spiral curve, the theta sub s are equal to each other. And then removing kind of the, the extraneous points, again, our points along a spiral curve. We're going to start with the TS, tangent to spiral, then go to the SC, spiral to curve, then CS, curve to spiral point, and then finally end on the ST point, spiral back to tangent. So again, TS, point of tangent to spiral, SC is the spiral to the curve, CS is curve to spiral, and ST is the spiral back to the tangent. Delta is the deflection or intersecting angle of the full curve degrees. L sub S is the length of spiral, so that's the distance along that spiral from the TS to the SC point. And also, it's the same if it's a symmetric curve from the CS to the ST. We also have theta sub S, which is the spiral angle. Again, typically, those are equal to each other. And theta sub S equals the length of spiral, L sub S, multiplied by the degree of curvature over 200 feet. The overall deflection angle, delta, is equal to delta sub C plus 2 times theta sub S, or if you need to calculate the delta sub c, that's equal to your overall deflection minus 2 times theta sub s. T sub s is the tangent length of the whole spiral curve. So this is the distance between the pi and the ts point. So when we're doing stationing, the t sub s is a critical component. And it's important to make the distinction t sub s is that tangent length ts, so uppercase t, uppercase s, is the tangent to spiral point. An important component when we're looking at the actual layout of a spiral is the lateral offset, or P. 
And this is a very common metric used in spiral curves to determine if the benefit of the spiral curve is worth the uh, extra effort to design and construct the curve. And typically, if P is less than eight inches, so less than two thirds of a foot, it's simply not worth the effort to construct a spiral curve. You should just construct, construct a simple curve and drivers on their own will drive that spiral transition anyway. K is the distance from the simple curve to the beginning of the spiral. So if in the case of a simple curve being present, K would be that dis distance between the TS and the PC. X is the tangent length to any point on the spiral. So moving along the tangent, if we're trying to denote a specific point, X is that distance along the tangent the related lateral offset is y. That's the tangent offset to any particular point of interest on the spiral. x sub s is the overall tangent length to the end of the spiral. And the related value y sub s is that overall tangent offset to the end of the spiral that will give you the location of your sc point. So if you have x sub s and y sub s as it relates to the ts point, you can locate precisely the SC point. Within this smaller spiral layout image, we're just looking at one spiral transition. So again, theta sub s here is the spiral angle for that full spiral on either side of the curve. Theta is the spiral angle to any point on the spiral curve. So this again relates to the X and Y. So if you're looking at that particular point, theta will be that spiral angle uh, that's going to help define x and y. LT, sometimes also labeled as u, is the long tangent for the spiral curve, spiral transition. ST, which also sometimes can be labeled as v, is the short tangent for the full spiral. LC is the long chord for the full spiral, so the, the line connecting TS and SC is the long chord. And R sub C is the radius of the circular curve. The spiral layout starts by shifting the simple curve away from the tangent, your lateral distance P. So we saw that in that earlier image where the simple curve and spiral curves were overlaid with each other. So again, we need to, to shift that simple curve away from the tangent. And then the spiral can then connect to the tangent to the point that we've shifted that simple curve away from the tangent. As we looked with the X and Y components, you can lay out points along the spiral with those X and Y components based on chord and deflection angle measurements. And here's the equation for the deflection angles uh, incrementally as you move along a spiral. And it's important to note that this is a, a formula that works reasonably well with smaller values of theta, but as theta increases, uh, another approximation should be used for a higher level of precision. So this is a summary of spiral curves, which are, again, curve spiral transitions that connect to a simple curve to help drivers maintain equilibrium on a horizontal curve.